Hallelujah. Come on, family. God, God bless you. Come on, family. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you, family. Hallelujah. Come on, family. Join in. God bless you, Ms. Green. Tell me how to, uh, Ms. Lazenby. Ms. Green, let, let me know how the sound is. Ms. Murray, God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Green. Hallelujah. Ms. Jordan, God bless you. Mr. Griffin, God bless you. Ms. Cole, God bless you. Listen, don't nobody share. Don't nobody share. You don't have to share. Don't share it. Don't share it. We're going to share it at the end. We're going to get the word, and then at the end, everybody go in and share it. God bless you, Kate. Hallelujah. Ricky Raven, God bless you. Michelle Rogers, God bless you. Come on, share a lot. Don't share. Nobody share. Just show some love, family. Make sure y'all like the video. Don't share. We'll share at the end. We're gonna share the we're gonna share at the end. Hallelujah. Listen today. Hallelujah. We want to talk about tonight. Going into a new year. Sierra Jones, God bless you. Going into a new year. Why say God bless you? Going into the new year, we want to talk about locked up. And they don't want you, they don't want to let you out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Locked up won't let you out. Hallelujah. You got to hear this. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Show some love, family. Before we even get started, go ahead and show some love. We going in tonight. Those of you who have your Bibles, get to the book of Acts. Get to the book of Acts. Sister Brinkley, God bless you. Hallelujah. Star Wars, God bless you. Locked up. Don't let me out. We're going to talk about that tonight. Mr. Moore, God bless you. Come on. Nobody ain't got to share. We're going to share at the end. When it's over with, I want everybody to share the lie when it's over with. Hallelujah. We want people to just jump in. Want them to come in and get in. Kim, God bless you. Ms. Gibson, God bless you. And God bless you. Locked up. They won't let you out. Hallelujah. <laughs> How many people tonight came to eat? Hallelujah. How many people tonight came to eat tonight? If you came to eat tonight, let me know that you came to eat tonight. Hallelujah. God bless you, Miss Starworth. Starworth. God bless you. Hallelujah. Those of you came to eat tonight, let's see the plates. There it is. Let's see the silverware. Locked up. Y'all see the top. God bless you, Uncle Richard. Locked up. They won't let you out. Hallelujah. Michael Starworth, God bless you. Locked up. They won't let you out. I'm telling you, y'all don't want to miss this. Glory be to the light. It's a treat. I'm telling you, this is the last live of the year. You know we going in. We giving it full throttle. Those of you came to eat, let us see the silverware. Let us see the plate. Let us see the spoon. Understand no season needed for the word is already seasoned for this season of your life. God bless you, Miss Angela. Miss Williams, God bless you. So listen, locked up. They won't let you out. 
<laughs> Glory be to the. We're going into prayer. Get your Bible. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter number 16. Get to the book of Acts, chapter number 16. We're going in, family. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we're going to get this thing started. Hallelujah. God bless you, Miss McNair. Locked up. Won't let you out. Locked up. Won't let you out. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Locked up. Won't let you out. We going into the word. Hey. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I feel, I feel his glory, family. Don't, you wouldn't want to miss this. You wouldn't want to miss this. For nothing in the world. So God bless you. Welcome to Shine's Live. Expect the unexpected. Where God can do everything but fail. We're going to shift you right to the point of stepping over into the new year. And when it's time to step over to the new year, we'll let you go. Go into prayer. Step over into the new year. And we're excited about your future. God bless each and every one of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness. We thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. Father, besides you, there is no other Father. And we bless your holy name. Father, we ask you to forgive us for our sin, known and unknown, seen and unseen. Seen and unseen. Let us decrease in the natural, Father, increase in the spirit. Give us this day our daily bread. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, saturate me with your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. Father, speak through me. Give me, give me wisdom. Give me knowledge and understanding, Father. To give your people your word. Speak to me, Father, tonight. Use me as your vessel. I submit my will to your will. Let your will be done on the live tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the Holy Spirit put a hedge of fire all around the live. We come up against every distraction, every plot plan of the enemy. Father, we ask you to move and move by your power. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Come on, family, say amen. Come on, family, say amen. Come on, family, say amen, amen. Hallelujah. Locked up. They won't let you out. Hallelujah. Come on, family. We're going to get this word in. We're going to shift you to the end of 19, preparing you for 20. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The jail cells are overcrowded. People are locked up. And they won't let them out. 2019 has been one year. 2019. If, if you know what I'm talking about, it's been some ups and some downs for you in 2019. You ought to wave your hand. If it's been some ups and downs for you in 2019, you ought to wave your hand. If it's been some ups and downs for you in 2019, you ought to wave your hand. Because through all the ups and downs, you still made it. And tonight we want to go to a deeper level. We want to go to a whole nother level tonight. We want to go in the word tonight and understand what locked up won't let you out. I wonder what prophet coming at this. I don't know where he's going. But I do know that he's feeding tonight. Acts chapter 16, family. Acts chapter 16. Locked up. They won't let you out. Hallelujah. It's been some tough times. It's been some rough times. The sermon tonight, locked up. They won't let you out. Hallelujah. God bless those that are tuning in. Nobody has to share. Just make sure you like the video. And at the end of the live, go back and share it. At the end of the live. Locked up. They won't let you out. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16, family, verse number 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought forth her master much gain by soothsaying. I need y'all to catch this. Hallelujah. Now, it came to pass, as we went to prayer, pay attention. It came to pass, as we went to prayer, See, prayer is power. You need to write that down. Prayer is power. 
Prayer is power. It came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Ah, Lord, my God. Lord, Lord. Won't let you out. It says, when we went to prayer, ah, when we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Why, when we going into prayer, does a spirit, a certain damsel, with a spirit of divination meets us while we're going into prayer? Some of you tonight need to understand prayer is power. And the enemy will take your prayer life from you and make you seem tired when you won't pray. That make you see like you, you don't know the words to say. You don't feel like praying. You're too busy to pray. Do you know Paul and Silas, listen to me good, Paul and Silas, as we went to pray, they were headed to pray. And now as they were headed to pray, there met them a damsel, a woman possessed with a spirit of divination she met them while they were going to pray isn't it something it is it ironic that the enemy want to meet you before you get to prayer oh, y'all don't want to talk to me tonight remember closed mouth don't get fed hallelujah listen met them on their way to prayer y'all ain't talking to me why is this doubt from meeting us on our way to prayer. Why when I get ready to pray, I'm falling asleep? Why when I get ready to pray, the phone ringing? Why when I get ready to pray, all the hell breaks loose? Because the enemy know that there is more prayer, there is more power. The Bible says as Paul and Silas were going to pray, uh -huh, there met them. The enemy always wants to meet you and stop you and t-bone you and stop you in your track before you get to where your prayer is a breakthrough y'all y'all don't want to speak tonight but you got to understand your prayer life if the enemy can kill anything he'll kill your prayer life where where there's prayer there is power the enemy will have you tired and sleep when it comes to praying but when it comes to anything up you live and awoke you got to pay attention because right here in chapter 16, verse number 16, God bless you, Shannon. It says that it came to pass as we went to prayer. We were going to prayer. And as we were going to prayer, the enemy interrupted our prayer. Oh, come on, help me somebody. The enemy wants to stop you from praying. Uh, y'all don't want to be real tonight. Y'all don't want to have this wisdom walk tonight. Y'all don't want to. Y'all want to talk about it tonight. But what is real is in 2019, you know you didn't pray like you should. In 2019, you know that the enemy tried to steal your prayer life, and because the less you pray. The weaker you become, the more you pray, the stronger you become. And the enemy always plays with your prayer life. The enemy wants you to stop praying because the moment you stop praying, my God, you become weak. Uh, if anybody tonight that's on, that can be honest and say 2019, my prayer life was not where it used, it should have been. My, every time I went to pray, something happened to stop me from praying. It was something that broke loose, that kept my mind confused, that I could not pray. Uh, I'm speaking to some people that had a problem with their prayer life. If you're going to be real, be real about it. It was a time you had a problem. You didn't know what to pray. You said, Lord, I don't even know what to pray. Why? Because the enemy want to meet you. Uh, he want to meet you at that point where you don't know what to pray. I don't know who I'm talking about. Come on. See, now we got people that being real. 2019, I lost my prayer life. My prayer life was not what it should have been in 2019. And I want to tell you why. Ain't no need to act it like you've been praying all of 2019. We all, can, you, you can't get enough of praying. We can pray until the cows come on and, and it's still not enough of praying. Watch this. And it came to pass, we're in Acts chapter 16, verse number 16. As we went, as we went to pray, 
a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination. Now we know this is not the Holy Spirit. It's a familiar spirit. It's a spirit dealing with the demons. Ah, help us, Holy Ghost. Met us while we going to pray. Met us. Come on now. Prayer light gets hijacked. Come on. Met us. Come on. Let, let's be real. We, we still say we still sanctified. We still Holy Ghost filled and five about time. But you didn't pray like you should in 2019. Now, let's just be real. Because the enemy made it his business to interrupt the times you was getting ready to pray. When your prayer was going to be most effective, the enemy had Bozo the Clown to come over and cause you to forget to pray. The enemy caused something to break loose in the house to come Come on. Cause you to forget to pray. You lay down, say, I'm going to sit here for a minute. Next thing you know, you wake up, it's another day. The enemy is still in your prayer life. Who am I talking to? The enemy is still in your prayer life. He meets you when you want to pray. Uh, he, he meets you when you want to pray. When, when it's time to pray, when it's time to read the word. The Bible says in Acts 16 and 16, when Paul and Silas was going to pray, a woman possessed with a spirit of divination met them. Now, I need y'all to pay close attention. She's meeting them when they get ready to have a prayer meeting. Uh, why? Because if the enemy can interrupt you while you praying, your prayer life is your life. It's your lifeline. If your prayer life becomes weak, your lifeline becomes weak. Watch this. Spirit of divination met us. Watch this. Who brought her master much gain by soothsaying. You know the psychics and all of those that tell lies and eat fly. All of those. Soothsaying. Y'all got y'all know it witchcraft and root workers and all of that. This is what she was. But here she come trying to stop two men of God on their way to pray. But the enemy never comes at you as the enemy. It's only giving us clues to who this woman is, but the Bible will tell you in a few minutes, watch this, what the Bible tells you. Right now when it says she was possessed, that means when she first came, she did not show that she was possessed. Let me help you out. Verse 17. The same followed Paul and us and, and cried saying, these men are servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Now, the woman that is possessed with a spirit of divination is following two men of God, interrupting them on their way to pray. She meets them while they're on their way to pray. Okay, catch this. So she gets in with them and say, these are true men of God. They are showing us the way. Wait a minute. That spirit that she's operating in is a spirit of divination. She has a familiar spirit. When you in Christ, you don't have a familiar spirit. You have the same spirit. Y'all y'all don't want to talk to me tonight. You got to understand your prayer life in 2019 was jacked up. The devil hijacked your prayer life because he knew if he could get in front of you praying, he could stop your manifestation from coming. Because the more you pray, the more power you got. It's almost like Popeye. When Pluto caught him when he was weak, but when he got to his spinach, Pluto was in trouble. Ah, uh, y'all Y'all don't want to talk to me. Papa let Pluto have it. What got me is when Papa was getting bleeped by Pluto on the cartoon, he would always have spinach would come out from somewhere, but he always had enough script to squeeze the can to pop the spinach out. And once he popped the spinach out, y'all don't want to talk to me. When he popped the spinach out, oh my God, it goes down inside of him. And now Papa is stronger than Pluto. Papa is stronger than his opponent. Why was the why was Pluto fighting Papa? Pluto was fighting Papa because Papa had the olive oil. Y'all know what the olive oil is. Uh, so don't think that Pluto won't fight you when you get the olive oil. Y'all don't wanna Y'all don't wanna be real tonight. The enemy goes to interrupt these men. 
of God want to follow them to a prayer meet. And you think the devil won't follow you to church. And you think the devil won't follow you to work. And you think the devil won't follow you to the stove. And you think the devil won't follow you to your house. Watch this, family. And it came to pass as we went to pray, a certain dancer possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Come on now. You feel it? Papa always had enough script left in him that he could squeeze the can and pop the spinach out. And he had to fight for that olive oil. Some of you right here right now need to say fight for olive oil. And I ain't talking about the olive oil on the TV. I'm talking about the olive oil that gives you the oil. Come on. Yeah, that's right. Enemy all around. Come on. Come on. You got to fight for the oil. You got to fight for olive oil. No wonder Popeye, he would be getting beat up, but he had enough energy that he wasn't going to let the oil slip away from him. You got to fight for the olive oil. You got to fight for the olive oil. This is where they get the olive, the olive oil comes from the olive. You, you, you let the enemy fool you. He interrupting your prayer life. She interrupting your prayer life. They interrupt your study time. They interrupt your reading time. They don't want you to get the oil because when you get the oil, when 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 Papa gets the oil, Pluto is in trouble. And some of you need to fight for the oil, for the olive oil, and let Pluto know you in trouble. Because I'm not going to give up because you hit me in 2019 and you caught me on the blind side. I'm not going to give up because my eyes are on the oil. I need the olive oil. I'm fighting. Is there anybody tonight that you fighting for the olive oil? You, you fight. Your family needs the oil to flow in your life. Your family depending on you to get this oil. Thank God for Papa that he would fight for olive oil. Y'all don't pay attention to these, these cartoons. Y'all don't pay attention. It showed you that Papa, no matter how much Pluto, the devil wanted to beat up on you, you still got to keep enough script to get that olive oil. Come on. You better say that. Your problem. When you get the olive oil, your problems got problems. You got to fight for the olive oil. Your children will be covered under the olive oil. Your family will be covered under the olive oil. You will be covered under the olive oil. Your community will be covered under the olive oil. You wondering why the enemy fighting you so hard in 20. 19. He got to fight you so you won't squeeze and get the spinach and go and get the olive oil. The enemy was hoping that you gave up by now. But my God, you didn't give up. He might have blacked your eye, hit you across your head, make you fall on your knees. You might have fell in sin. You might have messed up. But my God, you still here. Is there anybody tonight that 2019 it taught you a lesson it knocked you down it beat you up but you can still thank God that you still here is anybody tonight can still thank God that you still here come on you knocked me down I got back up yes round for round pound for pound I'm still, you know, what do I mean? Celia say, I may be black, I may be ugly, but I thank God that I'm still here. You know, that's off of the color purple. But I know Papa said, I ain't giving up on the olive oil. And some of you, you need the oil. It's the, it's the anointing. That's the oil. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Your family is yoked up in bondage, but it's the anointing. That's the olive oil that's going to destroy the yoke. That's why the Bible says. Come on. I'm still here. I'm still here. 
I'm still. The devil tried to trick you. He tried to fool you. He made them play them play a game with your mind. He got you out the will of God. You was down, but you was not out. But I thank God that I'm still here. Papa, guess what? You not you not Papa down, Pluto, but you did not kill Papa. The problem is the devil should have got you while you were down. But I'm here to post spinach inside of you tonight and tell you to get up and fight for that olive oil. They, you locked up and they don't want to let you out. Thank God. People came, people left, people was friends with you, they walked away from you, a whole bunch of stuff happened, but you, my brother, you, my sister, you, you still here. You had some knots on your head. It was some time that you was in depression. It was some time that you didn't understand how it was going to work. Your refrigerator been empty. Your pockets been empty. Your, you almost thought you, your lights was getting cut off. You didn't know what was going to happen, but you still here. The devil hit you with everything that he had, but thank God that I'm still. I'm still here. I'm still here. At the end of 2019, no matter what happened from January to December the 31st, thank God I am still here. I had some letdowns. I had some setbacks. I even had some set ups. But thank God that I'm still here. Some of you lost your job. Some of you lost your marriage. Some of you, the devil wanted you to lose your mind. He was hitting you on every side because he can't fight you when you're on your best. So he tries to beat you when you act. At your worst. Uh, the enemy want to fight you when you don't have the script that you need. Notice in the cartoon, Pluto beats up on Popeye when Popeye, guess what? Now, Pluto never catches Popeye when he's strong. He always catches Popeye when he's weak. Y'all don't want to talk to me, but that's the word. That's what happens in, in the cartoon. Go watch it. Pluto always catches Papa when he weak. But guess what? Papa, he stays in the fight because he was fighting for that olive oil. Because he knew the olive oil was going to complete his whole life. He knew that if he get the olive oil, everything. That's why the Bible said, touch not my anointing, do my prophet no harm. Why? Because the anointing got the oil and God said, don't touch the oil. So Pluto tries to catch you. Papa, when he's weak, the devil tries to catch you when you done had a weak moment, when you done fell from grace, that's when the devil gets in your face because he know round for round, if you was on your script, if you was on your A game, he could not beat you. So what he does, he catch you in your weakness and then he begins to hit you left and right and right and left. Why does the enemy come? He comes before you can even start praying. He, he comes with one thing after another, after another, after another. Why? Because he wants to keep you down when he got you down. But I need every one of you on here tonight to say, I'm back up. I'm back up. I'm back up. Don't count me out. I'm back up. I'm back up. Squeezing the spinach tonight. The squeeze. What is the spinach? The spinach is this word. I'm squeezing the spinach so you can get the spinach inside of you. So before 2019 is over, that devil that was afflicting you, that pain that was dealing with you, you can deal with it and not take it into 2020. I don't care if we don't have, but an hour and a half before a little less than an hour and a half before 12 o'clock before midnight it, it don't matter it don't matter how much time you have God can do it in a second I'm back up I'm back up you knock me down but I'm back up and you got to beat this enemy so I'm going to pump this word into you tonight so you can knock him out once and for all and what you don't understand is when Papa I get the spinach when you get the word inside of you it brings script because the joy of the Lord is my script. It brings script knowing that God did not bring me this far to lead me. Knowing that some people came into 2019 but did not make it out of 2019. But I thank God that I made it. 
When it came to pass as Paul and Silas, here come this lady with a spirit of divination on them, on her while she's going to pray. And then what gets me in verse 17, she cries saying, these men are servants, watch this, of the most high God. Now catch this, this lady with a spirit of divination, the devil is crafty. Remember, the serpent was the most subtle beast. He was difficult to analyze. So catch this. The woman has a spirit of divination. Listen to a divination demon, devil. It all go together. That's where it comes from. That's why the Holy Spirit is from God. The demonic spirit is from the devil. She has a spirit of divination. That's demonic. Now, she is following two men of God. Why? Because it's something. She's trying to blend in because she ain't got no word. Watch this. The same follow Paul and, and us cried and saying, these men are servants of the most high God. Isn't it something that, that the devil is calling these men servants of the most high God, but he's using this woman to try to do something with these men. Why is a woman with a spirit of divination following two men of God trying to fit in and opening their mouth and saying these are servants of God? True, they are servants of God, but you just making all this noise because you don't want nobody to know that you're really against them and you're not for them. So you got to be careful with people who holler and say this and that about you, around you, and secretly they trying to sabotage you. You, you got to watch people who walk with you in the darkness, but light come, they ain't nowhere to be found. You, you got to watch people. Come on, family. You got to watch them. Christ said these men are servants of the most high God, which show us the way of salvation. So that means she knows that these are men of God. But the spirit inside of her knows that these are men of God as well. But just because you are a man of God or a woman of God does not mean the devil does not try to get somebody to come and follow you along the way. Why? Because he's trying to catch you. He tried to stop them when they were going to pray. He's trying to catch you and stop you from get doing what you're supposed to be doing. Because the moment you do what you're supposed to be doing, the more prayer that you have, the more spinach that you have, the more word that you have, the more power that you have. Prayer is power. Verse number 18. And this did she many days. She's following them. And she's not doing anything wrong to other people. Oh, these are men of God. They show us the way. Yes, thank God for Paul and Silas. Thank God. And the whole time she has a demon inside of her. The whole time she's saying they are men of God showing us the way to salvation. But she don't really want salvation. Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy And she did this many days, 18. But Paul being grieved because you will not be ignorant when you are really trusting and believing in God. God said, I won't have you ignorant to Satan's devices or his attacks. Now being ignorant, come on, that's right, a discretion, to sabotage. To being ignorant, it means to be unlearned. My people perish in the book of Hosea. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. Guess what? In Timothy, 2 Timothy 2 and 15, he said to study. So my people are perishing because they're not studying. And when you study it, when you don't study, you don't have the knowledge of who is with you. The Bible says, know them that labor among you. But Paul and Silas, they kept a prayer life, but they stayed and kept a connection line to God. They kept living holy. So when they were living holy, this woman comes in and tries to follow them because she wants to find out what they know, how they do it, so they can try to come and mirrorize what Paul and Silas does. A lot of people, preachers, I used to see them, they used to come on my live and try to figure out what am I doing so they can go and mirrorize what I'm doing. But the Bible said that, that the woman had Paul and Silas, they got grieved in the spirit. Oh, they got greedy. They said, wait a minute. 
People look at the outer appearance, but God look at the heart. God, this man look down and watch this. We in verse 18. And she did this many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said unto the spirit. Paul turned and said to the spirit. Watch this. The spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Now, isn't it something, isn't it ironic that the moment you go to pray, the enemy tries to interrupt you. The moment you live right, the enemy goes to walk beside you. And guess what? The enemy going to give you your props. All oh, these are men of God. But she had a spirit of divination. She had a spirit of divination. She was only trying to seek what they know to try to use what they know, use it as a mirror effect. To flip it around and use it for her gain. Because the Bible says she brought her master much gain by said You got to be careful with people who, who just often give words just to give words. You, the Bible clearly tells us my sheep know my voice, not voices. My voice and a stranger they will not follow. How many times have you asked God to show you something and God just said I'm not going to show you nothing. I'm just going to wait. God ain't going to show you just because you want God to show you when you want him to show you. So, But they had a relationship with God. They had a prayer life kept going. So no matter how good it was or how bad it was, they kept praying to God. And as they kept praying to God, they kept a prayer life. They kept a lifeline connection. And Paul being grieved because the moment you get saved, you get rid of that stony heart. And God gives you a heart transplant and you get his heart. And when you get God's heart, God's heart said, wait a minute, something in this woman ain't right. And some of you would have said, why is Paul telling that evil spirit to come out of the lady when she wasn't doing nothing but giving up? credit but you got to be careful with the devil because the devil will say root 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 for you the whole time just want to stay with you to know what you know to learn what you learn to try to take it and use it for suicide watch this but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit come out of thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her and it came out the same hour. Some people that was around said, wait a minute. This lady been around here giving y'all credit, telling everybody that y'all are men of God. They already know that they men of God. But the woman figured she can fool them by just blending in. You got to be careful with people who blend in with you just to look like you. But they only dare to learn what you learn. To try to get you. To try to twist that thing on you. Locked up. Won't let you out. We're going to get that family. Now watch this. Paul said come out of. Some of you would have thought Paul was wrong. For telling her to come out. But you got to realize. Exactly camouflage. You got to realize that Paul sees. Not the outer appearance. Paul see what's on the inside. And some people just because they say they witch it don't mean that they witch it. Some people got to camouflage with you to get close to you so they can try to figure out anything about you. And some of you, that's how in 2019 the devil got you. He didn't get you with the horns on his head. He acted like he was saved. She acted like she was saved. They got close to you. They called themselves your friend only to learn everything about you. Then take your name and scandalize it in the street. Why? Because guess what? The name that you have, the name that you have, it, it gets to places before you get there. It goes before you can get there. The name that you have. So the enemy was after the name to tear up your name in 2019. So when you walk into your purpose, your name will already have mud on it. Why? Because the Bible said, don't let your good be evil spoken of. But you got to watch the devil because he'll play like he want the Bible. He'll play like he want God. She'll play like she really want God. She'll stay there with you. She'll act like she's praying with you. Remember, this lady was going with them to prayer. She interrupted them in prayer and started following them to a prayer meeting. Why? Because the devil just is sneaky. He's crafty. He's cunning. He's difficult to analyze. But the devil said, listen, you can't get them acting different from them. 
That's why you got to know them that labor among you because the enemy done slid up with Paul and Silas and saying, yes, these are true men of God and everybody with them agreeing with them because the truth of the matter is the devil ain't telling no lie. They are true men of God that was leading people to salvation. The devil was not lying, but the truth of the matter, the people around kept looking at her on the outside, not knowing the spirit that was operating on the inside. You got to know them, know them, that labor among you, know them. That's why the Bible tells us to try the spirit by the spirit to see is it from God. How do I try the spirit by the spirit? When somebody give you a word, when somebody saying God said this to you personally, you say, God, if this you, confirm it and God will, if it's him. We're on verse 19, Acts 16 and 19. And when her master saw that the hope of their gain was gone. Listen what it said. And when the master saw that the hope of their gain was gone. What was their gain? Their gain was in soothsaying. The gain was in soothsaying. The gain. Because it's only to get you out the will of God. To get you into the pit of hell. So the enemy saw that remember now. Verse number um, 16 said, which brought her master much gain by soothsaying. Watch it, by soothsaying. Now listen to verse 19. The demon has came out of her in 18. But in 19, I want y'all to pay attention. In 19, when her master saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace. Are y'all following me? Y'all eating good. Y'all eating good. How many people eating good tonight? How many people eating good? How many people eating good? We fit to go, Father. We fit to crank up. Locked up. Won't let you out. Anybody eat good tonight? Anybody learning? You're learning. You're learning. If you're learning, say something. Okay, okay, all right, let's go. Now catch this. So the spirit was to bring gain to her master by soothsaying. Trying to learn what you learn. Trying to figure out how you prophesy. Trying to, trying to steal information to make much gain by soothsaying. That was in verse number 16, she began to fall. Verse number 17, she began to open her mouth while falling. Watch this. Verse number 18, the spirit is already done grieved them and is cast out of them. Verse 19, her master saw the hope of their gain was gone because the spirit was no longer present in the woman. The soothsaying spirit. It was no longer present inside of her. So they said we can't gain nothing because she don't have nothing now. The spirit, they done got rid of the evil spirit. Now she has a different spirit. The evil spirit, when they called the spirit out, the spirit had to leave. And then they they caught Paul in silence. Why? Why did they catch it? Because they wanted her to know them, but they didn't want them to know her. Come on. That's right. That's right. The devil tries to mimic God. God has a prophet, the devil has soothsayer. God has a pastor, the devil has uh the devil has faith pastors, you know? Uh God has the church, the devil has the club. I mean it's right there. It's right in front of you. You, you got to pay to get in the club. You only got to pay to get in church. But anyway, we don't get all into all that. You got to, you dancing in the church. The devil let you dance in the club. We don't get into all that. But they drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. How are they, God bless you, Ms. Aldrin, how are these men troubling their city? These men are troubling their city because they're exposing their demons. 
You got to be careful. You can't follow the crowd all the time. You got to be careful when a true man or woman of God steps on the scene. You got to understand like Papa has to understand he has to fight Pluto. You trying to figure out why is everybody against the one that's right? Because the one that's right is exposing the ones that wrong. When you work in a store, you don't study the counterfeit money. You always study the, the uh, real money. Once you study the real, the counterfeit would never fool you. Pay attention. They trouble our city. Why do they trouble? Because they casting out demons. Because y'all was making money by Susan. Now you can't make no money by Susan because it's true prophets that done showed up in the land and what you say ain't manifesting. And now we see manifestation from the true sons of God. Now you got a problem saying they ain't right. No, they ain't right. They right. You wrong. Because you getting showed up. Darkness does not like light. 21. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to, to observe being Romans. 22. And the multitude rose up together against them. Listen to this. That right? And the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrate rent off their clothes and command to beat them. Command to have them beat it. Because they cast out a demon. Because they showed people what real was. People were too busy looking at the outer appearance. They, they said no that's a demon and boom come out. And the Sioux says the masters of the suit, they got mad because now they're not receiving money. So because they're not receiving money, now they mad and they lie and they come up against the real. And you have to watch when a lot of people gang up against the real. Because the real ex exposes the fake. Darkness and light does not have anything to do. Darkness don't like light because when light come in the room, darkness has to leave. The command to beat them. Verse 23. And when they had laid many strikes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. We got them fall into prison they said remember they gathered up right here as a multitude in 22 and the multitude rolled up together against them and the multitude got them thrown in prison they got them beaten they had scraps on their back and they sold them in prison while locked up it won't let you out 2019 had you locked up in some situation 2019 had you locked up in sin didn't want to let you out well, y'all don't want to talk to me y'all Y'all don't want to be real you didn't understand why you couldn't quit quit doing what you were doing 2019 had shackles on you it locked you up it was trying to drain everything out of you Paul and Silas is locked up they won't let them out. All because they got rid of a demonic spirit. The people rose up against them because they were standing for righteousness. But they, the people in the town, wanted the ritualist living and Paul and Silas with righteous living. That's why God has righteous living. The devil has ritualist living. It's a difference. The devil always try to mimic God. God say marry, the devil say fornicate. God say don't sin, the devil say sin. They got them locked up. For doing the right thing, they got them locked up. 2019 had your finances locked up. Stop you from praying because prayer was going to bust through to let your finances loose. How many people believe that 2019 that your finances 
were locked up. It, it was not like it should have been. You knew it was more, but you didn't understand how to get more. If that's you, say it's me. My finances, that things weren't going like they should. I knew it should have been better. I didn't understand what was going on. It was always something. That because the enemy that sued your finances in prison, locked them up. The sued your kids, locked them up. The threw your mind trying to lock it up. The threw all of this stuff on you. Try to keep you locked up all of 2019. Interrupting your prayer life. And some of you, 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 you going to follow these people? On, on, that's doing wrong on Facebook. You you doing the same thing that they doing. They locked up in prison. God took me up in a vision and he showed me that a leader was in prison to sin. I'm talking about a pastor of a church of a church in Tulsa. He told me that he was in prison to sin and the man sin was fornication. When in time you get locked up in prison, that means you have went to trial and you have been convicted. You have been found guilty and you have been sentenced. And his sin was fornication. The enemy, the enemy will follow you to church. But people who are here tonight, they know people here that when the fire of God shows up in the church, what are some of the stuff that people start doing when the fire of God shows up that have a demon? Watch this. Anybody that have been in a sermon service where in the fire of God shows up. And all of a sudden the atmosphere changed in the room. And the presence of God. In, what do people do to have the wrong spirit inside of them? Say what's in your check. You can't cash. I'm going to tell you. What happens is. They fight it. They can't breathe. They run out. Come on. These people are saying it because they have seen it. They start regurgitating. Demons start manifesting. They start kicking and screaming. They got to leave out to get out. They look down. I mean, it's so much. If you ain't never been to a service, breathe, come on, jittering, sweating real bad, come on, screaming, hollering, I'm telling you, feel like they're being choked. Got to go to the bathroom. Why? Because the enemy cannot stand the presence of God, the fire of God. And if you don't believe me, you go back and read. Come on, vomiting, yeah. You can go back and read when the man was possessed with the 2,000 demons on the side of the mountain. When Jesus stepped down onto the land, the demons began to talk to Jesus and say, why are you tormenting me? Jesus never started saying, I torment you by fire. But the, his presence automatically begins to torment the demons. And then some of you don't understand why people don't like you. Because as long as you walking right, they ain't going to like you. Yeah, people done seen it. So we know what happens. So they beat them. They lock them up. Into prison. Charging the jailer to keep them safely. Verse 24. Who having received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison, not the outside, thrust them into the inside. So there's got to be three layers of the prison. The front, the middle, the back. Thrust them in the middle, the inner prison, and make their feet fast and stop. That means lock them up. Shackle them up. Lock them up and don't want to let them out. Why? All because they were exposing demonic activity. Ah, uh, don't touch that dial. You fit to eat now. You should already be asking for seconds. 
Now watch this. We're on verse 25. Now they locked up because they delivered a woman that was possessed with a demon. And the demons got mad because that's where they made their money from. From Sue said. So they got mad because they made their money from Sue said. And the demon was gone. So the woman, if she didn't have a demon, she couldn't sue say no more. Watch this. I want you to pay attention to this part very clear, clearly. I want you to pay really close attention. Listen to verse 25 at midnight. I need everybody to say midnight. I need everybody to say midnight. I'm going to take you some. I'm fit, I'm fit to bring it. I'm fit to bring it. Y'all better. Be, at midnight. I need y'all to say midnight. Midnight. Now, I want to show y'all something in verse 25 that relates to the beginning. And there at the end, I want y'all to pay attention to how true men and women of God still carry themselves, even though people are convicting them of being wrong when they casting out demons. Uh, the Bible says, at midnight, Paul and Silas pray. Time out, coach. Wait. Time out. Let's go to Acts chapter 16, verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. Hold right there. Let's go to Acts chapter 16, verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. You got to understand, no matter where they at, they still had a prayer life. I don't care if you locked up in prison. You got to keep a prayer life. I don't care if you walk in the streets. You got to keep a prayer life. The Bible said Acts 16 and 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. In Acts 16 and 25, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. One day was free. The other one, they was locked up. But they both had the same. They, they kept the same mind frame. Some of y'all don't. Let me help you out. Paul and Silas were free in 16 and 16. But 16 and 25, they was locked up, but they were still praying in Acts 16 and 16 and Acts 16 and 25. They were still praying. Even behind bars, they were still praying. And some of you trying to figure out why when you go to pray, the enemy make you fall asleep. Because my cousin, he gone on. He done passed. He he came in. He made it in January. He lost his life in February. But he said something like this right here. He said, if you sleep late, you lose weight. It makes sense in the beginning. But he began to talk about what happened, you know, when you're in prison. You sleep late, you lose weight because the food come early. That's what he was referring to. But I need y'all to catch this. The more you sleep and the less you praying, you lose weight in the spirit. You lose weight in the spirit. More prayer, more power. The enemy is after your prayer life. That's right. Watch this. And at midnight, Paul and Silas in prison prayed. Paul and Silas was headed to prayer. They was free. And they still was praying. They was in prison. And they still was praying. But not only were they praying. But the Bible said, and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. They were still praying. And then they began to sing. They were praying in prison. Locked up. They won't let you out. They were praying in prison. 
Because they know God has the last say so. And then they begin the same song that everybody in the prison begin to hear them. The Bible say at midnight. I don't know who am I talking to tonight, but 2019 had you locked up. But I want to declare over your life at midnight. Something getting ready to break off of your life. At midnight, what held you in 2019? In 2020, it won't hold you. At midnight, I need everybody to say at midnight. It's breaking off of your life at midnight. The stress, the worration, the letdown, the depression, the financial situation, ah, everything, your marriage, everything is breaking off. Everything that, that was contrary to the word of God for your life, every plot and plan of the enemy that the enemy sought for you to destroy you in 2019 at midnight. Paul, in silence, they prayed. At midnight, Paul and Silas, they pray and then they song. I, I want to speak to you prophetically right here. I want to give you a commercial right here. I want to just interrupt this program to tell you at midnight tonight, you need to pray. And after you pray, you need to sing a song. At midnight. At midnight. You got about 54 minutes before midnight. 54 minutes before midnight. 2019 had you locked up would let you out you could not catch a grip but I'm here to prophesy and to prophetically declare over your life at midnight this thing got to break at midnight this thing has to break Paul and Silas and locked up I said, we, they, they got my hands, they got my feet, but you ain't got my mouth. I'm, I'm still going to pray. I, I'm still going to sing praises. I'm still going to give God the glory because I could have died in 2019, but he saw me through. Ah, he saw me through the enemy wanted sickness to take you out. The enemy wanted frustration to take you out. The enemy wanted finances to take you out. The enemy wanted worration to take you out. The enemy wanted stress to take you out. But God, at midnight, at midnight, at midnight, Y'all yeah, yeah, don't want to speak to me, but it was something that took place at midnight. They prayed and they sang. And any time you pray to God, and any time you sang to God, something has to happen. 2019, you were locked up. You felt like they had you in a box. You felt like that it was more in your life than where you was at. You felt like I can't go forward because something keep pulling me back. Come on now, who am I talking to? It look like the more I go forward, the more I go back. It feels like there are shackles on my hand. It feels like there are shackles on my feet. I can't go nowhere. 2019 had you in a chokehold. 2019 had you on lockdown. But 2019 better realize that it's got about 51 minutes to afflict you. That's it. Because at midnight, the stuff that worried you in 19 is not going to worry you in 20. At midnight, they, they kept you out of stuff that you knew you were supposed to have your hand in. At midnight, they took stuff away from you that belonged to you at midnight. That's what 2019 did. The enemy used 2019 to have you locked up. Locked up, you couldn't think. You got more bills than money. Lord, I said it wasn't going to be like this this year. It should be more. I'm locked up. I'm back in the same situation. Paul and Silas showed us what to do. The Bible said they prayed. And then they sang. And all of the prisoners heard them. Y'all don't want to talk to me. 26. We're going to go to 33, 26. 
when midnight came. Paul and Silas wanted to let him know, you, you thought you kept me out? You tied my hands, you tied my feet where I couldn't get in, but you didn't put nothing over my mouth. If I couldn't say a word, then I have to wave my hand. But I still got my mouth, you got my hands locked up and my feet locked up. 2019 had you in the chokehold. You should have bought a house. You, you should have had that car. You should have had that business. You should have had that contract. You should have had that job. But it put you in the chokehold. It put you in the chokehold. But one thing they never covered was your mouth. Because the fruit of your lips can give God glory. God, I love you. In spite of my situation, God, I give you praise. God, I thank you. 26, 2019, taught you. 26, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone bind with were loose. Wait a minute. We prayed, we locked up. But we began to pray. Our Father which art in heaven. And then after the prayer, the Bible says that they saw and everybody in the prison heard and suddenly You got about 48 minutes for 2019. All of the frustration and the chokeholds and, and the things that they kept you out of and held you back out of in 2019. It's got about 40 some minutes left and it's got to let you go. It cannot hold you any longer. Midnight, they, they, they begin to pray. They begin to sing. And the Bible says... And suddenly, somebody, everybody, say suddenly. Everybody say suddenly. Everybody say suddenly. Close mouth, don't get fed. Everybody say suddenly. Because I pray, I song, and suddenly. Let me catch y'all. Let me let y'all hear it again. I pray, I sung, and then suddenly. Buffy, go look up the definition for suddenly and put it on here. Suddenly. Suddenly. Watch this. I pray, I sung. Suddenly, suddenly, yeah, y'all don't understand. Suddenly, suddenly, after the prayer and after the song, no wonder the devil want to steal your prayer. No wonder the enemy want to steal praise and worship. No wonder the enemy want to steal your prayer life because prayer and praise. Produce a suddenly. Write that down. Prayer and praise produce suddenly. Look what suddenly mean. Quickly and unexpectedly. Quickly and unexpectedly. I prayed. I gave him praise. With the fruit of my lips, I sung to him. And then suddenly, quickly, unexpectedly at midnight prayer and praise equal suddenly and suddenly means quickly unexpectedly there was a great earthquake and the foundation shook 
because the right prayer and the right praise will break you out of anything. I need somebody to write that down. The right prayer and the right praise will break you out of anything. I don't care what trap is over your mind. I don't care what the devil put in front of you. If you can give a prayer and if you can give a praise, it'll break you out of anything. I don't care how many doors were closed in your faith. If you can give a prayer and you can give a praise, it'll break you out of anything. I don't care how many lies were told on you. If you can give a prayer and you can give a praise, it'll break you out of anything. Then suddenly, not next month, not next year, suddenly, suddenly it happened. Boom. An earthquake hit. Why? Because the right prayer and right praise will make God shake the foundation for you. You want to get God to move? You want to get God to shake a foundation? I don't know if y'all remember. But everybody that's on my prayer line that remember or heard the testimony or was at the church and you saw it and you heard it take place when I prophesied it. It was a lady. Her name was Miss Frail. She came to church and I told her, I said, listen, it's a guy you pray for, a young man you pray for. She said, yes, that's my grandson. I said, the Lord said, because of your prayers have come up to him as a memorial. I said, the Lord said, when you feel an earthquake shake near you, and she stayed in Harlem. It was a couple years ago. When you hear feel an earthquake shake near you, your grandson is getting ready to transition from one facility, facility to another facility, and then he's getting ready to come home. Do you know y'all? Y'all felt the earthquake in Thompson, Augusta, Harlem, Grove Town. The earthquake shook. That lady called me. She said, who are you? I, so Sister Tracy remember. They, they, she said, who are you? She said, the earthquake, it just hit. People calling me like, oh my God, man. Look at that, K was there, they remember. We was at the church. And then when I promised out again, it was not even long after that. The earthquake. And whenever y'all go back and figure out when that big earthquake hit and it felt from Thompson, Warrington, all the way. I'm telling you, that lady called me. And she said, My God. She said, My God. She said, I just felt the earthquake. Later on, the next week or so, she got word that her, her grandson was being transitioned. And then later he was being released. Why? Because when the right prayer and when the right praise goes up, it'll shake the foundation. And when you can get God to move on your behalf, when God moves, it shakes stuff. Paul and Silas, they pray. At midnight, they sang and people in the jail heard them. And when they prayed, then suddenly, unexpectedly, quickly, the foundation of the prison shook. And immediately, so you had suddenly and immediately, Lord have mercy. Suddenly, unexpectedly, quickly, immediately, right then, right then, it shook. And all the doors were open. Let me just put a commercial in right here. Let me interrupt this broadcast. Listen, I prophesy to every person under the sound of my voice that will receive it. Every door in 2019 that was closed for you, I'm telling you, when you pray and when you say, suddenly, all the doors that were shot in your face, get ready to swing open. If you're getting ready to swing open, it's getting ready to swing open. Every door, every door, every door 
and 13 that they shot in your face every door in 2019 that was shot in your face, face every promotion that you were denied, every contract that they looked over you, everything that was shot in your face, I'm telling you the doors are getting ready to be swung open. Y'all better receive that. That would be a good time to receive that. Matter of fact, it'd be a good time to shout in your house. Because about 30 minutes, the doors have to swing open for you in 2020. In about 30 minutes, the doors have to swing open for you in 2020. They thought they was keeping you out of something. God will knock the, the hinges off of the door. Won't be a door for them to put up. You'll walk through the door. And was shaking immediately and all the doors were open and every one's bands were loose. Everybody else was already in prison before Paul and Silas got there. So when Paul and Silas went there, because they had locked the wrong one up. They shouldn't have never. The enemy had no business putting his hands on nothing dealing with you in 2019. But because he did it, I'm telling you, it's getting ready to be doors that swing open in front of you. And you just going to walk through doors and things going to come to you that you thought that you could never have. It's going to come easy. Why? Because prayer and praise produces results. The door swung open. Every prison door swung open. Every person that was chained up, the chains fell off of them. Paul and Silas, the chains fell off. And this would get me. Paul and Silas was the only ones that was in there for no reason at all. But everybody, because of what they did, everybody, I need y'all to catch this, everybody connected to you go in. It ain't got nothing. They should be in prison for what they did, but they're going to win because they connected to you. When the door swing open, your brother and your sister going to win. Because if you look at it, all of the chains and the doors open. Because you was in the mix. They don't understand if it had not been for Paul and Silas. They were still been in prison, but now the doors are open and the chains are falling off because Paul and Silas. Everybody, door swung open. Everybody chains fell off because of you. Because of you. Because of you. You know how that family going to be set free. You know how your children going to be set free. You know how that marriage going to be set free. You know how that relationship going to be It's going to be because of you. Don't lose your cry. Don't lose your prayer life. Never let the enemy steal your voice from giving God glory on a whole nother level. I'm going to read 26 again. Because I want y'all to, to really hear it. Acts 16 and 26. And suddenly there was a, girt, a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were open. And everyone's bands were loose. Listen to it. Immediately all the doors. All the doors. Not some doors. All the doors. From January, February, March, April, May, all the way to December. Every door that was closed in your face, I'm telling you, they get ready to swing open. Everywhere they thought that they was going to keep us out of, we get ready to walk into it. But catch this, this is the good part. This is the part where you really can get your shout on. And everyone's, not just Two, not just Paul and Silas, but the Bible said everyone's bands were loose. Because of what Paul and Silas did, everyone's bands were loose. That means people connected to you. Because they connected to you, they're going to get the overflow. 
Anytime you have something that flow over, when you have the overflow, it flows over to everything around you. They got their doors open up because of you. Not only that, they got the chains and the shackles off of them because of you. Why? Because you got to understand that God said when they locked you up, you can never touch the oil. When they put their mouth on you, when they close the door on you, God said, okay. But 2020, we coming for everything that the devil thought that he stole. At midnight, when the prayer and the singing go forth. And everything shake. Not just your doors going to be open. Not just you going to be set free. Your children going to be set free. Your family going to be set free. People you thought that could never be set free that's connected to you going to be set free. And it's all because of you here tonight. Of you here tonight. God gave me this word to get it his people because God is a man of his word. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. This word will not return void. You may void your part, but this word will not return void. You're going to see testimonies off of this. Just pray. Just do what I told you. And you watch. Just because you're here tonight, you're getting ready to see people that could never get a breakthrough go get one. Those that were people on their job, I'm telling you, everybody around me get ready to upgrade. I'm telling you, everybody connected to me get ready to upgrade. When I, I'm gonna tell you, me and my brother, we we tight, and everybody know. Listen, because the more grace that God gave me, my niece on here right now, and people from my prayer line, they on here too. Me and my brother Ty. God upgraded me to a, uh, a 2019 F-150. Right? My brother got upgraded to a F-150. He didn't get the 19. He, he ain't living this life, but he still got some of the blessing. Because he got upgraded to a F-150. I'm telling you. See my niece said yes he did. I'm telling you. Unexpectedly. Upgrades getting ready to hit. Unexpected contracts getting ready to be signed. Unexpected doors getting ready to be opened. I know you hear me Uncle Richard. I'm no, I'm telling you. Now I want to show y'all something. About 30, 32 minutes. Before we step over into our overdue season. Some of you is overdue. Watch this. Verse 27. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep. So no wonder God is going to do it at midnight. Uncle Richard, I'll just let you know to be on the lookout for another door to swing open in your favor because you showed up here tonight. Be on the lookout. Another door to swing open in your favor. One that you thought you could not get the swing over, just gonna swing over in your favor. To receive that in Jesus' name. The Bible says, and the keeper of the prisoner awakened out of his sleep. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that by the time the enemy recognized that I'm free, I'll already be free. Now that's something right there. You right about that. The devil sleeping, God never sleeps. So watch this. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep, 
seeing the prison doors open. He drew out his sword. Watch this. Watch what the devil does. He drew out his sword and would have killed himself. You'll come back with a testimony, Uncle Richard. Now listen, it said he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we all are here. Paul in silence said, listen, don't even take your life. Y'all don't understand the devil was going to commit suicide when he found out that you were not locked out no more. You better say it. You better say it, but uh, I just feel his glory, family. I'm telling you. Yeah. It says that the prisoner the, the man that was supposed to keep him, the guard, was asleep. Through all the praying, the enemy was sleeping on your prayer life. Somebody need to say, you slept on the wrong prayer life. So no wonder the enemy wants you to go to sleep because he sleep. Because if both of y'all sleep. Come on. Come on. If both of y'all sleep, catch it out now, family. If both of y'all sleep, the de no wonder the devil wants you to sleep. He slept on the wrong person's prayer life. But the Bible says that. So no wonder the enemy was sleeping on your prayer life. No wonder the enemy try to get you to sleep when it's time to pray. Devil, you slept on the wrong person. You thought it wasn't nothing to it. Oh, it ain't that much. It ain't but a few of them on there. It does not matter. He said when two or three are gathered together, he's one in the midst. Ah, oh, devil, you slept on the wrong prayer life. The enemy wants you to fall asleep so you won't have a prayer life. Just like this guard was asleep and the prayer light opened up the door and all the doors were open and the chains fell off and everything that they said they couldn't have like freedom they was having it. And the devil when he found out that he could not guard a man of God, he could not guard a woman of God, when he found out he could not guard them, he pulled out his sword to kill himself. Then the man of God and the woman of God said we ain't running from nothing. We ain't going nowhere. We just want to show you that you could not hold us. These prisons can't hold us. These walls can't hold us. 2019 cannot hold you any longer. It's time for 2019 to let you go. It's got about 27 minutes. And it's got to let you go. Y'all playing on it. It's got to let you go. You can't guard a man of God. He pulled out his sword, the devil, the one that locked you up, pulled his sword out to kill himself because he slept on the wrong one. They ain't doing nothing but praying. They'll be here when I woke up. Let me take a nap. And the enemy went to sleep and God showed up at midnight. And every door swung open. Every chain fell off. That's the God that we serve. And it said the earthquake shook. Let me take you to when Jesus was on the cross. Come on somebody. When Jesus was on the cross. They said surely it got dark. And it shook. The earth shook. Why surely we have crucified the wrong one. Guess what I'm saying. I feel it's glory. Good God of mine. Let me tell you. I feel his glory. Ooh, what? Y'all play. Jesus. It got dark. The earth shook.
people got out of their graves. Then they said, surely we have crucified the wrong one. Let me just speak over you prophetically right here. 2019, they crucified you. Uh, but surely they crucified the wrong one because 2020, everything getting ready to shake. Everything getting ready to shake. When I call upon the name of the Lord, he shows up. When he shows up, the ground shakes. The God I serve, when he shows up, the ground shakes. I got testimonies. Book. Y'all can go back on Google and find out when the last earthquake hit. Thompson, hit Warrington, hit Harlem, hit Augusta, hit Grove Town, and that's the same that following Sunday I prophesied to a lady. And that's what happened. It shook. God is getting ready to shake. You know what you do when you have some lemonade or some tea? And everything that settled down at the bottom and the top is built up. You take that thing and you shake it up. 2020, God said, I'm already in 2020. I'm shaking up everything. Everything that settled at the bottom, I'm shaking it up. I'm bringing it back together. What you thought that you lost, the opportunity that you thought that you could not have, it's coming back around. 2020 is your expected year. You ought to receive that. Surely, he crucified the wrong one. My Savior walks on water. My Lord and Savior, they hung him on the cross. They scratched him wide. Come on, Paul and Silas. Y'all know how they did it. They put you wide. They scratched you wide. Had you bound. But guess what? When I call upon the name of the Lord, the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. The ground shakes when he asks us. His voice is like thunder. Don't be surprised if you hear some thundering going on as you pray. Because when he asks us, he asks us with thunder that it shakes the whole earth. The earth shakes like kick God Almighty. Because, whoo. Glory to the Lamb. The devil said I should kill myself. I done lost them. I had them 2019. But I done lost them. When I woke up, I lost what I thought that I had. Come on. Let's go to 29. Then he called for a light and sprang up and came trembling. And brought them out and said, Sir, what must I Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. The people that treated you wrong, the people that denied you, they're going to ask you, what must I do to be saved? Because they ain't never seen nobody. They tried to purposely betray you, sabotage you, and you kept showing up, and you kept the faith. And because you kept the faith and did not let go, God said, they're going to ask you, what must I do to be saved? We ain't never seen nobody pray. And it's shaped like it's shaking. We serve a miracle working God. A God that cannot fail. A God that will not fail. 2020 things for to shake up for you. Don't be surprised when he, when he shake you from away. From the thing that was holding you down. Paul and Silas, and they brought him out and said, "Sir, what must I do to be saved?" This is the one that had them that was supposed to watch them. They said, "What must I do to be saved?" Because I ain't never seen a God answer by fire. I ain't never seen a God show up and shake and the whole earth feel it. This is the true and living God, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha. And when I call on him, when he answer, he shakes. Voices like thunder. 
and brought them out and they said, Sir, what must I do? He said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Catch this. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Catch this. And your house. And your house. And your house. So not only do God want to save the one that threw you in, he want to save their house too. 32, and they spake unto him the words of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of night and washed their stripes and was baptized. Y'all ain't talking to me. And the same man that was supposed to watch them in prison, Paul and Silas, end up baptizing the same man that was watching them in the inner courts of the prison. The same man. The same one that the people that talked about you, the same one that you're going to have to minister to, you're going to have to pray for, they're going to have to come to you. Why? The same ones that look down on you, got to look up to you. The same one, because my God knows how to turn that thing around. What was first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And you got to pay attention, because if you miss the ship, ah, uh, yeah. He took them the same hour of night and washed their stripes. He washed the stripes. What they beat on him, he washed them. And they baptized him. And he and all, he is straight away. Everybody connected to them. When he did that, they baptized him and his people. Because when God show up for you, Everybody that down at you go see you. Everybody who looked over you go look up to you. It's about 18 minutes before you step into 2020. You getting ready to step into a new season. You get ready to hear the door swing open. You get ready to see the door swing open. You get ready to hear the change fall. You get ready to step into your due season. I speak it over your life. I speak it over your life. I speak it over you. You ain't praying, but tonight before midnight, I want you praying from the, from the time you go in until after midnight. Pray your way through and sing your way through. And we know when you pray and sing and when we do it together, my God, Paul and Silas prays. Paul and Silas sung that the whole jail heard them. If you pray and I pray and you sing and I sing and it's going to be a shake in 2020. Don't play with it. Don't miss this. They never see you pray. They never know you pray. It don't even matter. It ain't on them. This on you. They going to be free because of you. Your household going to be free because of you. This decision you make tonight is going to set people in your family free. This decision going to set people that's connected to you free. I'm here to tell you tonight. God sent me on an assignment to tell you to back up and let God go in and begin to bring you out because you locked up. And 2019 didn't want to let you go. But now it has no choice because God's word will not return void. If he gave me the word, you're going to see the word that he gave me come into manifestation. And you get ready to walk into the best year of your life. And I don't care who don't like it, they can't stop it. You get ready to see. God answer by, by fire. People say that they hear it from God. They don't even understand when God talk it thunder. You hear from the spirit of God because when God talk it thunder. Pray. Sing. Into 2020. 
Pray and sing out of 2019 into 2020. Every door getting ready to swing open. Every way getting ready to be made. Now don't forget about me when you get your blessing, okay? Don't do that. Don't forget about me. I'm going to be blessed and highly favored, but because I release the word of the Lord over your life, if you come back and put something in the ground, you understand? You keep getting the harvest. Seed time harvest. I know people might not do it, but it don't matter. The people who who feel it, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's some oil on this. I'm telling you, it's some oil on this. You ain't got on all year. You go find your secret place. I don't care what they think. They can stay there or they can join you. It don't really matter. It don't really matter. But we getting ready to step into what eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. We getting ready to step into a new level, a new dimension. A new level of glory in God. I'm telling you, you get ready to walk in. Tracy Lane, y'all get ready. Get ready for the shift. Tracy Lane, Tracy Leslie, get ready for the shift. Come on, everybody holler shift. Come on, shift. Come on, put it. I'm going to call y'all name out. We get ready to go. We get ready to go. I want to call y'all name out. I want to give y'all time to get in there, get where you need to be at, turn your little music on, whatever you need to do, whatever you got to say. You take it to God and you go in there and after midnight, don't keep looking at your phone. You go up and when you think you done crossed over, when you feel it break through, Green, Miss Green, Miss Harris, Miss Andrews, Miss Dorsey, Miss Nicole, Miss Christian Nicole, uh, Miss Nikki Nicole, Miss Christian Nicole, Miss Miss Lazarus, Mr. Lane, Miss Walker, Miss Miss Williams, Miss Murray, Miss Hall, Miss Brown, Miss Belton, Miss Sanchez. Miss Crenshaw, Miss Audrey, Miss Leslie. Mr. Wallace, Mr. Watley, Ms. Norris, Ms. Ross. I'm telling you, you getting ready to see family. Two minutes and we get ready to go. We're ready to go. I want you to be ready. I want you to pray your way through. I want you to remember this word. Remember the mouth that gave you, the vessel that God used, Ms. Brinkley, Ms. McNair, Ms. Crenshaw. Remember the voice. The, Mr. Griffin, Mr. Mr. Wallace, Mr. Ms. McNair, remember the vessel. Remember the vessel. No matter what the vessel got, you just remember the vessel. Oh, he already blessed. It don't matter. Remember the vessel. Remember the vessel. Shift. Shift. When you shift, you go into another side, especially when you go into the high side. Listen, we getting ready to pray, family. We getting ready to pray. Last minute directions. When we get off of here, before you go, it's 31 of y'all. Before you go, or more, 30 more, 32 is growing. Before you go and do what I tell you to do. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Pay attention. Share the video. Like the video, then go in and pray and sing, and you watch. 2020 is your time. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Lord, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love and kindness. We thank you for all of 2020, 19, Father, you brought us, Father, but we know that 2020, 2020 is an expected year. Father, we thank you uh, for releasing the shackles. We thank you, Father, for everything that tried to hold us back, Father, that's being dropped off. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak to every situation over your people. Father, we release your Holy Spirit and fire, Father, to visit every prayer closet, every place that they pray in, Father. Let your presence be felt for them, God. Let them feel you, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, when we pray and when we begin to sing to you. Father, put a song in our heart to sing to you. Father, let it shake. Let a shaking take place in 2020 that they can see the manifestation of your word. Father, we know that you are, Father God, and you're God all by yourself. Beside you, there is no other. Father, we thank you for the journey. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for watching over us. And Father, give those a special blessing that share this live when we get off. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We thank you for 2020 in advance. Father, we thank you, Father, for everything you're doing, you did, you have done, and you will do. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you honor. And Father, we give you praise in your son Jesus' name. Come on, family. Say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on. Amen, amen. Come on. We get ready to shift. You're getting ready to see it. Go find your place. Don't worry about your phone. Trust me. It's 11.51. Trust me. After you share the video, go find your place. Tell God to give you a song and begin to pray. Think about all of 2019. Pray and thank God for how he brought you out. Pray hard. And then when you feel the shift to pop in into 2020, you sang a song. I don't care how you sang. You sang a song. Whatever song he put in your heart. And I'm telling you, you getting ready to see. 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 So listen, family, listen, tell everybody Happy New Year right now. Tell everybody Happy New Year. Come on, tell everybody Happy New Year. And I don't want y'all to think that I had a whole message. I, I don't. I just had the sermon, the topic, and the what you call it, and the scripture. Tell everybody Happy New Year. We stepping over. We getting everything. Hallelujah. We getting everything. Those of you that are not connected, you better get connected and stay connected. Hallelujah. Listen. So, we, we, gonna, we might come back in at the end of the week. If not, by Sunday, we'll come again Sunday. By 8 o'clock Sunday, delivering a word to you. 8 o'clock Sunday. Here, make sure you have your notifications turned on because we're doing something different. We're sharing at the end of the video so those that really want it can come and get it at the beginning of the video. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. Listen, I'm telling you, we're going higher. We're going higher. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, let's go higher. Let's go higher. Thank you, Sister Brinkley. Let's go higher. Happy, Happy New Year, Uncle Richard and family. Listen, we thank God for you and your and, and auntie. Y'all keep pressing. This is getting ready to happen for you. You know I ain't shot you one. You know I'm a man of my word. Whatever God tells me, I release it. And you have seen the manifestation. And everybody getting ready to see the manifestation. It's time to go higher. Hallelujah. Listen, so those of you that don't have nowhere to go Sunday, you can come to church Sunday. I bring forth the word every first Sunday, uh, 12 p.m. at Rogers Tabernacle, 108 Guy Road. Listen, God bless each and every one of you. You got five minutes. I'm fit to end this live. I love you. Happy New Year. We there. You fit to feel this shade. God bless you. We love you. Shalom.